Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. I hope you're all having a great day. Today I thought I'd show you how I made this fun little lawn fawn pull tab card. So let's get started. These are the stamps I'm going to be using today. And from this, this is the Butterfly Kisses stamp set. And we're going to be using the clouds there, the three little critters, and those flowers as well. And the coordinating dies. And then from this set here, we're going to be using that little bird. And this is the Elfie Selfie stamp set. And also the dies. And then from this last one here, this is called Love Letters. And we're going to be using that little envelope that says Happy Mail on it. And the dies as well. I'm going to be stamping on the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So I've gone ahead and placed it in my Misty stamp positioner. I'm going to be stamping using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then I'm going to also stamp a few more of these. I need four of the envelopes, one more small cloud, and about three more sets of the flowers so that I'll end up with about a dozen flowers. Now I've taped down the dies to these stamps and I've cut them down into smaller pieces so they'll fit into my uh, Sizzix Sidekick machine. And I used some purple tape to tape these dies in place. So I've gone ahead and run all those through my machine. So let's go ahead and start coloring. So I'm going to start off by using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. And I've got the light blue and the blender pen here. So I'm going to just put a little bit of that blue around the edges, just randomly on the edges of these uh, clouds. And then I'm going to pull that in towards the center. And that's just going to give a little shadow. Then with Sugar Almond Pink, Light Gray, and Gray, I'm going to color in the little bunny. I'm starting with the lightest color, and then I'm pulling in that darker color towards the center there, kind of leaving the center of his face the lightest. And I am using the blender pen to do all my blending here. I'm adding a little bit of pink to his cheeks. Now you could also use a water brush here because these are water-based pens. But I do find when I'm coloring in the little critters that sometimes the water brush or a brush with water is a little too wet. So I recently had purchased the blender pen and I really love it. I use it pretty much all the time for the little critters. I just find it's a lot easier. And that blender pen number is 999. So I decided to put a little pink on his tummy there and you can see him all colored in. So now I'm gonna take the sugared almond pink, the oatmeal and the mid brown to color in my little bear. And basically I'm using the same technique for all three of my little critters starting with the lighter color and then adding the darker color and pulling those two together. And you'll see that I clean off my blender pen in between colors. So you just want to scribble it onto your scrap paper until it goes clear and then you'll know it's clean and then you can go on to your next color. So I did the coloring fairly quickly on these just so you could see what colors I used. But my main focus was to show you how I put together this little pull tab card. So again, I'm just adding a little shadowing here. And then on this little guy, I also decided to add a little bit of pink to his tummy here. So you can see there, he's all set. So now I'm going to take the sugar almond pink, the brown, the light brown, and the mustard to color in my little fox. And again, just same technique.
And now you can see that little guy up close as well. So now using the orange, the cobalt blue, and the light blue, I'm going to color in my little bird. And there that one's all set as well. So now with light blue, sugared almond pink, and lemon yellow, I'm going to color these little envelopes in, uh, in the three different colors. I ended up doing two of the blue, one pink, and one yellow. And I just put the color in the corners of each of the envelopes and then pulled it in towards the center, just to give it a little bit of a watercolored look. So now with orange, yellow, light blue, sugared almond pink, and pink, I colored in all those little flowers. Now I'm going to take the outside in stitch rectangle stackable and I'm going to take the largest one and I'm going to die cut two of these. I'm running these through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine and I've got two panels. I'm going to set one aside for the cover of our card and then I'm going to take the second one and do a couple of grassy borders from the grassy border die set. So I'm just going to place that about an inch up on my card. I'm just checking to make sure the cut line is at the top here. And then I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. And that's going to leave me a little stitch border around the bottom and the two sides. And then I'm going to die cut a second one a little bit higher than that first one. So maybe about an inch and a half. And then I'm going to run that through as well. So now that I have all all three of those pieces all set. I'm going to take that panel and I'm going to use Peacock Feathers and Mermaid Lagoon and I'm going to start with the Peacock Feathers. I'm using my foam applicator tool and I'm just going to cover this whole thing with a nice even coating of this color. And don't worry too much about blending yet. We're just going to add a layer of color and then I wanted to see where my grass line was going to be. And I'm going to add a little bit of that darker blue right along that grass line, just to add a little shadow there. And then I'm going to go back to the peacock feathers. And without inking it up, I'm just going to go ahead and blend those two colors together. And I should have said that these are the Distress Oxide inks from Tim Holtz that I'm using here. So now you can see that gives a nice little shadow there. So using my Distress Sprayer from Tim Holtz, this just has water in it. I'm going to spritz this entire panel and then I'm going to blot it up with a paper towel. And that's going to leave these beautiful little splatters. Now using Mowed Lawn and Twisted Citron, again from the Distress Oxide ink pads from Tim Holtz, I'm going to add a layer of the Twisted Citron across the entire grassy border. And then for a little bit of shadowing, I'm going to go back to the darker green and just add a little bit of that sort of towards the bottom up towards the top of those little grass blades there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for that second panel. So now I want to create the mailbox that we're going to be using. So this is from the Happy Mail die set and it will create that little mailbox there. So I'm taking a couple of pieces here. That first one, I'm going to be cutting it from the perfectly plaid 12 by 12 paper pack. And that's a double sided paper. One side is kind of the on an angle and one side is straight up and down. And if you just want to purchase the individual paper, this paper pattern is called Kristen. Now from the Lawn Fawn craft cardstock in a 100 pound weight, I'm going to die cut the, the mailbox post. And then for the little flag on the mailbox, I'm going to use my worn lipstick Distress Oxide ink. And I'm just going to uh, add the color all over this little piece of scrap paper here. I couldn't find a piece of paper the exact color that I wanted, so I decided to create my own. So I'm just adding ink all over this piece of paper here and then I'm going to die cut that out. So I'm running all three of these pieces through my die cut machine. And now on this one here you can see all the little score lines. So I'm going to go ahead and score these 
and then I'm using my bone folder to press out those creases. And this little one flips up so that you can have it look like the mailbox is closed, but we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to leave that one down and I'm going to press out the creases there. Now I want to add a little bit of ink around the edges of this mailbox just to give it a little bit more depth. So I'm very little ink on my applicator. I'm just going to add a little ink all the way around. And then I did want to add a little bit more in there as well. So I'm just going to open it back up and tuck a little bit more ink in there. So you can see that adds a lot of dimension there. So now with the little post for the mailbox, I'm using the Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide Ink. And I'm just going to add some color just to one side of this uh, post. And you can see that there. So now I just want to lay that out on my card so I can see where everything's going to be. And then I'm going to use the dies to create the illusion that the mail is coming out of the mailbox there when you pull on the tab. So I'm using the Let's, Let's Toast Pull Tab add-on. And I'm going to need all the pieces from this set except for that little one that goes on an angle there. So I've placed all of those pieces on a piece of Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock and I've die cut them. Now for this little pull tab, I'm just going to fold that in half and score it with my bone folder. And then I'm going to stamp on it and I'm going to stamp from the push here set. This is a stamp set that has all these great little sayings on it for pull tabs. So this one is going to say pull here. Now you could use the tab the way it is with that little arrow, but I decided to stamp on it. So for this piece here, you're going to follow these score lines. That first one is going to get folded in towards you, and the second one is going to get folded away from you. So it'll form a little accordion. So again, pushing that one towards you and that one away from you. And then I'm using my bone folder just to make sure I press that down really well. Now you can see that forms that little tab that's going to be the, basically the stopper on our little slider. So now for this piece here, this is just going to hold that mechanism in place on the back of our card. So I'm just folding on the score lines and pressing those out. Again, going back to the layout here, on this mailbox, I don't need that full back panel of the mailbox. So I'm going to cut it down to about one quarter of an inch. And that is because I'm going to be cutting that slit in the back of the mailbox and I don't want it to get too thick back there so that my little slit won't cut through. So I'm getting rid of that extra backing and I'm going to place this quarter inch score tape right along that little flap that we've created. So now you can see that'll just fold down and back. That's the piece that we cut away there. So that's all I'm doing here is just getting rid of some of that excess. So now this is going to form the little slot for that tab. So you want to make sure you have everything in place and what I like to do is just use a little bit of purple tape to hold everything down while I'm figuring out the positioning here. And then with my left hand I'm just going to hold that panel in place and I'm going to undo that. Then holding it down until I can grab some tape and just tape this exactly where I want it. And then that little slit is going to go about a quarter inch in from the side of the mailbox and centered on the mailbox. So now I'm going to tape that in place. So I need a couple of pieces of purple tape here to hold that down and now I can get rid of everything else. And I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. I am going to run it through twice just because I'm going through the two pieces of cardstock there and I just want to make sure that I get a nice clean cut. Now I'm going to remove all of that purple tape and you'll see there that the slit on the mailbox on the inside of the mailbox will line up with the panel on the card. 
Now if you have any leftover adhesive from the purple tape, make sure that you get rid of all that. You want your mechanism to work nice and smooth. So you don't want any stickiness inside here. So use your adhesive eraser and remove all of that excess, if there is any. Now for this little tab here, that's gonna slide right in here and that's our little tab mechanism. And that is gonna close up and that mechanism will be right inside the mailbox. And you can see that it'll pull in and out like just like that. So this little uh, panel here, I'm gonna tape that in place and determine where the tab on the side of this panel needs to be. So I'm just gonna use my purple tape and tape that down, and I'm lining it up right along the top edge of that panel, and then I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine. And that's gonna leave a little half circle here, tab, So now I want to attach the, the mailbox to my card. So before I do, I have to make sure I put the tab through the, those slits. But I thought it was getting a little bulky, so I'm going to cut a little bit away, about a quarter of an inch from both sides of those little tabs, and then about a quarter of an inch from the end of the tab, just to make that a little bit smaller. And I just didn't want as much bulk inside the mailbox. I didn't want anything to slow down the mechanism here. So now I'm gonna line up that little slit again. And what I'm gonna do is put glue on the entire back of this, this portion of the mailbox here. And this is just gonna be allow me to move it around a little bit if I need to. And I also still have to attach that little flap so this will give me an opportunity to get that in place. And that little flap is gonna go right over the back of that. But before I do that, I need to put this little pull tab in here. So once that's in position, I can now close up the mailbox. So that flap will go right around to the back of the mailbox. So that's why I use the glue here, just to make sure I had a little bit of time to put this flap towards the back of the mailbox and attach it in place. So I had removed the backing from the double-sided tape and attached everything. And I just want to use my bone folder just to press it out and make sure it's nice and flat. So now you can see that that little mechanism is working perfectly and it looks like the mail is going to come right out of the mailbox. So now with this little piece here, this is just a little uh, panel that's going to go on the back of the card to hold that mechanism in place. So for this little sleeve, I'm going to put some tape in that center rectangle on this piece, on the back side. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna place a little bit of score tape on the front side of that panel to hold that little tab down. So I'm removing the backing from both sides here. And then that is gonna go right around this panel. And I'm going to close it up first, then I'm going to slide it into place, and I want to make sure it's below that notch that's on the front of the card there, so that it doesn't show. And then once I have it positioned, I'm just going to press it down. And you can see there, that's just going to keep that nice and straight when it pulls in and out. So now I want to make sure I push this in all the way, and I can cut away that excess. Now I wanna put my little tab in place, and again, you could have left it where you just have that arrow showing, but I decided I wanted to stamp on this, so I just flipped it over, and I stamped pull here, and I'm just inking it up with a little bit of the Peacock Feathers ink. And then I'm gonna put glue on both sides of that little panel, that little tab, and I'm gonna glue it down. And then you can see there how easily that moves in and out. So now I've got my little grassy borders. I'm going to go ahead and attach this longer one. And I'm going to place some quarter inch tape on the back of this panel. And I'm just going to fluff up the grass just a little bit before I attach this to my car, just to give it a little bit more dimension. I'm removing the backing from the tape. And I'm lining it up with the bottom of this panel. 
Now I want to glue that little post down and I'm again going to go back to my quarter inch tape and I'm going to put a couple strips of this on this panel. And then again, I'm going to remove the backing and just tape this down. And this is going to make sure this is nice and secure here. Again, I'm going to just fluff up the grass a little bit here on this other one and place some tape along the back. Remove the backing and tape this down. Now, my little envelopes here, I'm going to have one down here in the grass. So I'm going to set that one aside. But these other three are going to be the three that are going to be coming out of the mailbox. So I'm just going to kind of position these in place where I think I want them to be. Just trying to move them around a little bit here, making sure that they're not too close to the top or the bottom of the mailbox. Because I do want to make sure that they move freely when, I, when we pull on that tab. So just to make sure that I have them in place, I'm just going to put a little glue between each of these envelopes and let that sit and dry for a minute here just so those are all attached. Now that I have that all set, I'm going to go ahead and take my anti-static tool and I'm going to place some powder on those envelopes. I want to make sure that everything moves nice and smoothly here. So those are going to sit right about there. So Again, I'm going to take my double-sided tape here. I'm going to put a little piece of it on that top tab and the bottom tab there. Then I'm going to remove the backing from those from that tape. I want to make sure that no adhesive is hanging off the side, so just make sure that you cut that close to the edge there. And then I'm going to slide these right into place. And basically I'm lining up that back envelope with the tab on the pull tab. Now, it's a little tight at first, so I'm going to add some more of my anti-static powder tool on this little tab and on the back and on the envelopes just to make sure that everything slides freely. And then it was still a little tight. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using my hand just to kind of pull this in and out. And I did this quite a few times just to loosen that up a little bit. So don't panic if it doesn't move freely at first. Just take a little bit of time to move it in and out and it will eventually move nice and easily. So now I've got my card, which is a standard A2 size card and it measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've taken my panel and I've put photo mounting tape all around the back of it. I just want to avoid anywhere where that mechanism is. So just be careful not to put tape up against that mechanism. And then I'm just going to tape this panel. I'm centering it on my card and I'm taping it down. And that using the photo mounting tape is just going to give us a little space to reach in there to pull on that tab. So now I have all of my little pieces. I'm going to use the Gina K foam squares to pop up a few things here. So I'm going to cut a little piece of that foam square and put it at the top of the flag. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom part. And that's just going to pop it up just a little bit there. Now for the little bear, I'm also going to pop him up with the foam squares. And then that envelope is going to tuck kind of behind him there. So I'm using a foam square on one side and then just some glue on the other side so I can slide it down behind him there. And I want to tuck it a little bit behind those blades of grass. And then for this little guy, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, glue on the bottom and a foam square up at the top there. And I'm just going to tuck it between those two sections of grass there. And I'm going to do the same thing for my little bunny. And also for the bird as well.
Now I'm going to just glue the clouds down flat. Now just keep in mind when you're gluing down some of these items that you don't want them to interfere at all with your pull tab or you know what the item that you're pulling out of the mailbox. So make sure that uh, you leave enough space there so you don't inter interfere with that mechanism. And now for these little flowers, I'm just going to use my Marvie Jewel Picker to pick those up. And it has a little sticky end on it, so it makes it really easy to attach these little flowers. So I went ahead and I attached all of my flowers. So here you can see the completed card, and you can see how cute these little guys are. And, and I'll show you here that little pull tab works nice and easily, and it looks like the mail is just popping out of the mailbox and he's going to catch it down below there. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I had such a great time making this card. And there is a list of all the supplies I used on today's card down below. So if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.